Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV is proudly supported by Adventure Spec in England, Rally Ray Products, Giant Loop in the United States and Adventure Moto in Australia. When Greg Yeager of RideADV.com.au invited me along to his three-day 900km bush to beach adventure, there was no holding back. And when he offered me a ride on a brand new Yamaha Tenere, the deal was sealed. With his adventure riding business, Greg has clocked up over 200,000 kilometres on these bikes and he's put a huge amount of effort into transforming what is a stock dual purpose bike into a highly capable adventurer. The video test of the Tenere is coming shortly, but in the meantime, if you want to see the mods that have been done to the bike, click on the link in the top right hand corner of the video now. For the moment, you're coming along with me on Greg's Bush to Beach Navigation Ride, and along the way, we'll ride with Australian motocross legend Mr. Stephen Gall, also riding a Yamaha Tenere. Now you may wonder why I'm playing deep south swamp music. Well, the answer is clear. We're heading for a swamp. Yeah, welcome to the bog hole. Although supported by Yamaha, these navigational rides are not brand specific and any road registered bike ready for adventure can come along. He's having a chuckle. He's gone the left side. Buddy. You ready for the bog hole of the century? I'll give it my best shot. Good luck. <laughs> Done very well, look at that, big roost. From my experience, planning a decent 900 kilometer three day ride with superb tracks and trails like these would mean studying maps for weeks. And there's nothing more frustrating than to get out in the bush only to discover the track is blocked or closed for some reason. Greg and his team ride and explore the tracks weeks in advance and on the day of the ride, he heads out early to confirm they're still open and identify if there's any dangers. The other great thing I like about Ride ADV is the safety features that put your mind at ease. Before commencing the ride, you are logged on and at the completion, you are logged off. How do you know it's on Foster? <laughs> Smell it from here. <laughs> um, do you know your region up the top? M, M the mic, yep. Yankee, Charlie. Five, eight. Oh, thanks, mate. Thank you. See you again. No worries. Sweep riders and a four-wheel drive capable of taking any broken down bikes or riders are following up the rear. And then there's the specials for those that want to be tested and go-arounds for those riders who'd like to take an easier route. Stephen Gore, welcome to Mad TV. Thanks, Dave. Great to be here, as usual. TB's first test for the day is a special about two kilometres of the deepest, gnarliest sand you can find. Uh, not compulsory, but a lot of people are going to give it a go today. Uh, give us a couple of pointers. Well, sand is very different to hard surface, as we all know, and largely it's keeping the weight off the front wheel by the use of the throttle. So keeping the throttle on consistently, not shutting it, not cutting it too much. Where possible, just keeping a steady throttle control, weight back slightly, and in the sand, you've got to let the front wheel have its own way to a degree. It's got to have its own way, find its way through and driven through with the power of the rear wheel. So it's a tricky surface, looking ahead, missing the big bumps and trying to flow with momentum on weight back is the key factors. Looking at this sand section right here, some of the guys are going to have problems, particularly when it's on a turn, keeping the power on smoothly through the turn using a natural wall on the outside or inside as a natural berm to keep flow and momentum going. But it's largely in the head, keeping the power on is the critical aspect. 
being able to ride with motocross legend Stephen Gall and later sit down and have a yarn with him is another great feature of Ride ADV. They always have special guests that add to the experience. Ride ADV is a navigational ride and not a race. Every evening your GPS is loaded with the track for the following day. You wake up in the morning, log in and then you take off with some friends or newfound riding buddies. The trail pace you set is up to you. You can stop and take in the view, have a coffee, basically do what you want as long as you've completed that day's track by around 4pm. How's that view, Steve? Oh, the view's so nice, Dave. It, this is just a special part of adventure riding is to see special places like this. And there's so many places in Australia that really have just glamorous scenery. This is why we do what we do, isn't it? It's just great. It is one of the reasons, that's for sure. Now, Greg, before you go, I just want to quickly talk about your Simpson Desert trip because that's a completely different concept. And, you know, so many people want to go across the Simpson, but they want to do it safely, and it takes truckloads of water and truckloads of fuel. Dave, we kept, we kept looking at the supported Simpson tour, and you, you ride, and you ride for two or three hours, and you wait for a car for six hours, and the whole concept just didn't seem to make sense. So we thought if we can put on each edge of the desert and the national park, we can put a bivouac style setup on each edge of the national park, you can ride to that, grab your, your fuel, grab your water, elect to stay there that night, or go to the next one. So you've got four days, four and a half days to go over and back. That is a brilliant concept, and uh, you know, there's a number of people I talked to today who, who were considering doing it because it's such a, a safe and practical way of doing it without being fueled up and loaded up with water. Well, Greg Yeager, thanks very much for bringing me along for Bush to Beach, and, and thank you so much for for giving uh, your Yamaha a run. It was just brilliant. Pleasure, Dave. Glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, mate. See you, bye bye. bye. Really strange weather. One minute it's boiling hot, the next minute it's pissing down rain. Uh, what I really like about this climb rally suit is that I can quickly pick those zips up myself uh, just by hand without even taking the the jacket off, so it's been so quick, you know. Downpour this came just straight away, and already I'm locked and uh, dry. <laughs> So Shane, long time Super Tenere rider, this is your first ride ADV, how have you found it? Uh, excellent, uh, first time I've been with this crew and uh, uh, day one yesterday uh, was great for me. I sort of class myself as a kind of like a dirt road tourer rather than a uh, hard enduro rider and um, I like the fact that these guys have picked uh, two routes for people each day and I like the fact they've pre-ridden the route just hours before you have and uh, they can save you from uh, getting yourself stuck and you know down a deep gorge or across, halfway across a creek or something they're there to help you and uh, it suits me fine. So this Super Tenere looks like it's done some miles. How many k's has it done? 210,000. Holy cow. Yeah, 210,000 trouble free kilometres too. It's a terrific motorcycle. Uh, it's a great all rounder. Uh, in, you know, people often ask me what it's like. I, I tell them it's a, it's a two wheeled land cruiser. You know, I can, I can hose it off and ride it all the way <coughs> to Melbourne, 1,000 kilometres, 1,000 miles in a day. Uh, and or I can do this kind of stuff, uh, take it off dirt, onto dirt roads and uh, get it all dusty and dirty and bring it home the next day and hose it off and do it again. 
So give me 30 seconds of your Iron Butt. The Iron Butt Rally is uh, an 11 day uh, event held in the USA. Uh, 100 people from around the world uh, get to start the Iron Butt Rally. It's held once every two years. And in a nutshell, it's like a big treasure hunt right across the USA. Uh, a few hours before the start, everyone's given a rally pack and in that rally pack are hundreds of what they call waypoints all around the USA that require you to ride to as many of those as possible and make it back in a small window. Uh, and you have to do that over 11 days. To, to, to finish the Iron Butt Rally, you've got to be capable of, of riding at least a thousand miles or 1,600 kilometers every day for 11 days straight. So it's, it's a pretty tough, That's pretty a tough, tough thing. Yeah, it is. I start hallucinating at 700. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, look, you know, so do I normally. You have to work your way up to it. It's not something you just leap into. In fact, um, you, you, you have to apply for an entry. And, and unless you've already done lots of long distance rides and already done certified rides with them, they, they, they're not, they're not going to let you in even to get a start in the rally. But if you do, it's uh, very satisfying to finish an Iron Butt Rally. Uh, that they say uh, that more people have actually flown in space than have finished an Iron Butt Rally. So just to be a finisher is good. I've managed to finish two of them. I did one of them on this bike, two up with my wife uh, on the back. She navigated while I did the riding and it was a great experience. I'll never forget it. Well, thanks Shane. Yeah, I guess you're a Tenere tragic. Uh, mate, I, I am. I, I'm, I'm really converted. This bike is the, probably the best motorcycle I've ever owned. No, no doubt about it. Thanks for coming to Mad TV. Thank you. I like those headlights, you could fry the fur off a kangaroo, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, mate, they are actually downsized. Downsized? Yeah, I had they look, they look like aircraft landing lights. Yeah, not, not many bikes can even run them. Hey, Katrina, how did you find today? It was absolutely incredible. Uh, it started with the special, which is the sand, and I spent all night thinking about how I'm going to kick ass on the sand. Yeah, and, and you did. I kicked ass until I fell on my ass. This is a Honda XR400. Yeah. It's a 2008. Um, it's electric start, so oh, good. awesome for girls so we don't have to kick start. Uh, upside down forks. Technics did an incredible job on the suspension to lower the bike for me. And uh, we've got a nice big 20 litre tank. Um, for me, that takes me about 500 kilometres. And um, it's just a sweet, a sweet ride for uh, for me. I'm I'm a beginner in into the sport, and I think uh, it's a great bike to start on. Well, welcome. If you if you did that ride today, 350 k's, you've done well. Welcome to adventure riding. Thank you very much. I'll be back. So just to ask, we've got a um, couple of kitchen handles here to keep things tight on. Yeah. We have an upside down bum bag that was fitted incorrectly. We have. The selector in third gear, which no longer works, so you have to go from second to, uh, to fourth. So you have to over rev second and then get into fourth. What else has happened? Well, the, the, the grips, because they've got wet and just spinning. Oh, yeah, just spinning around. Yeah, got that. Been there. What else have we got, Gaz? But you made it. But we made it so far. The tyre is absolutely ruined. Well, after all, it is an adventure. That's what we kept saying. It is an adventure, so... Yeah. Yeah, so Hopper, last time I saw you about, I think it was about a year ago, you were thinking about buying KDM 690, and you have. So tell me what you've got here. Yeah, I've got a 690, uh, 2012 model, 2013, fuel injection. Um, yeah, I was doing the APCX across Australia, and I love my WR, but I just wanted something with six speed. Uh, so I got this uh, second hand, but the bare bike. And then I'm going to know what to do, what kit do I put on it. Well, you didn't um and ah too long by the looks of things, so you got a KTM 700 kit. Yeah, I got the RR kit from um, Dolby Motors, Craig Hartley. Uh, I did discuss with you and other yeah. valuable people. Yeah, we're rally raiders, so it's good but, to see um, the difference. I just looked at the, the what, how much fuel you could carry, where it was carried, and all that sort of stuff. And um, I like this because the fuel's carried real low, and the bike's very, very capable. The rider lets it down a lot. Uh, but the bike's a great bike in uh, here. Yeah. Be great for this to be cruising in this sort of country. Oh, this is really good. It's it's really good, and it still goes all right when you get on the open stretches. You can still go easily up to the speed limit. Yeah, I was just looking down here. This battle scar drew, drew attention to me. That's a nice little one. Yeah, so I had a big off yesterday. Uh, oh, that's yesterday, is it? Yes. Yeah, Nothing like a fresh scratch. Well, one of those frustrating ones. It really wasn't my fault, but you know. <laughs> 
Big volume. We all say that. <laughs> big volume hanging down. Oh road. no. Oh, and God. you saw it in the middle of the road and just caught this handlebar. Oh no. So I just pulled the handlebar hard and I just went down hard and slid along the road for a bit. Holy cow, look at these lights. It burned yeah, the eyes well, out I of possums. I did a lot of research on the lights and um, undoubtedly they are the best lights but obviously the most expensive. Yeah, but do they, they draw are, much current? No, or, very little current. They're LE, LED, yes. huh? LED. But um, they undoubtedly are the best um, but, but quite pricey. I'll turn them on. Yeah, yeah, bust me. Whoa! <laughs> That's even in daylight. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, but yeah, it, not that I like riding at night in the bush, but... Um, it, well, it's, if you have to, we have to sometimes, aren't we? It does make it know. very capable. It works quite well. You know, simplicity, a cockpit's pretty simplistic, apart from bloody two GPS. Well, this one was playing up. All oh, right. The old 660 just yeah. keeps freezing on me. All oh, right. So yeah. uh, I've got the, got the new Montana, one. but Montana. it's good having so... Yeah. You can get one zoomed in, one zoomed out. It makes, yes. makes uh, following the tracks very easy. Yeah. And I finished these uh, 6.30 on Friday night. Ah. The old steg pegs. <laughs> That's just a, a trial thing. When you get to my age, standing up all day on the steep hills. Yes. The yes. old arm pump. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm in your club. I'm a little bit further down the road than you. So. Oh, mate, yeah, but you're such a good rider, it doesn't matter, see? <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, well, there you go. What an interesting bike. Yeah. And I might as well have shares in Adventure Moto, the amount of stuff I spent there. <laughs> Hang on, I'll get Hey, Steve, Smith, you listen to this? Go and say it again. I might as well have shares in Adventure Moto, the amount of stuff I spent there. <laughs> yeah. I saw your pants hanging up. He was yeah. raving about your pants, and he didn't know that I knew you. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I finally traded them in after six years, uh, like 200,000 k's. <laughs> got the old back on. You're back yeah. in them. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Hopper, good to see you, mate, and good to see you still adventuring. No worries, thank you. Thank you.